and we are back hey welcome everyone it is yes correct raven it is two for two tequila tuesday so glad you guys all bounced back uh, it is that time of the week again for another edition of the great game with matthew Arrett. uh it needs no introduction to all very all of you are very familiar with his work uh, don't forget to do us a favor jump over to matthew's various platforms where you can find his work over at the canadianpatriot.org as well as the rising tide uh, foundation and don't forget matthew Eric's substack as well uh, the links are totally there in the description so check it out uh, with that being said matthew welcome back to another edition of the great game how are you sir hey cj i'm doing well doing very well and uh <clears throat> I, uh, I'm very happy that we're, uh, we're exiting the 2022 and, uh, and there's a lot of potential going into 2023, but obviously it's good to get this 2022 behind us right. and start a new chapter in human civilization. Um, I hope people watching right now are, are not suffering the effects of, of Christmas party hangovers as much as I am, but, uh, <laughs> the if food you are you you're gonna enjoy this <laughs> the food thing is very real like i think I've, I've expanded my stomach so now you have no choice but the following days to consume even more because you're like oh, i'm hungry now but i i try to limit it but it's just hard when there's so many different good foods around yeah it's part of the holidays part of the culture but you're right though in in terms of uh 2022 is a very uh turbulent year uh, a lot of things multifaceted in terms of not only the the economic but the geopolitical mm -hmm landscape uh that's leading us into 2023 and i was yeah. i was hoping with the christmas season would come some some peace some reflection upon what that means peace on earth and so forth but matthew unfortunately it just doesn't doesn't seem that way i don't feel that in the air how about you now the spirit of tiny tim has not yet begun to take hold yet <laughs> but, <laughs> you know we need we need probably a, a few more lessons <clears throat> uh that need to slap us a little bit more into reality before we we start i think um tuning to the actual beat of the universe and you know we've been living under under a lot of illusions for a, a very long time um we've had these these false constructs of what we were told human beings were what governments were what the future was supposed to be which were all make-believe and now you know um there's a lot of readjustments let's just say that uh, breaking of bad habits of thinking of even feeling like a lot of people's very instincts themselves are miswired according to the types of cultural matrices that they've that they've been cultivated within that have been designed to bring up bring about the the worst ideas and lowest level passions which prevent us from I think seeing the beauty of what human beings are actually capable of in a non-romantic way and I, I'm I'm saying this now in regards to the clash of the two systems and a lot of people they they still are are mentally incapable of conceptualizing how a world not dominated by a death cult could possibly exist like what i'm saying here is like a non hobbesian world order hobbes being the you know the great theoretician of what was soon to become the british empire when was he around he was uh operating in the, in the 16th century late 16th century early 17th century and uh, and Hobbes outlined a rule of law for those who don't know, which was effectively a pre a precursor to something that became popular in our modern day under the term of Francis Fukuyama's uh, end of history, or the idea of a, you know the new world order as uh, as it's been bandied about in the twentieth century and into the present. But really, the end of history concept is rooted in the concepts of of Hobbes, Thomas Hobbes. Hobbes was uh, somebody who was a uh, a protege in many ways of uh, Paolo Sarpi, a Venetian grand strategist. Um, he was an associate of people like Francis Bacon. Um, in fact, probably there, there's there's enough evidence to indicate that they, Francis Bacon and Hobbes were even the lovers. Ugh. Um, oh, wow. He was wow. assigned to formulate a, an idea of or, or a thesis of what humanity should adapt to if we want to abide by the laws of God and of nature which was the idea that, um, well, he said, every the world must be assumed to be arranged according to each against all, that every individual unit of a person is at constant war with their neighbors, that every unit of, uh, of a nation, whatever those were back in his day, this is like, you know, communities, tribes are at war with other tribes. And because we have to assume that all states of perpetual conflict are a universal constant. You can't break that. 
the only way to have peace in his world was through the, the obedience to a Leviathan. That was actually the name of his most famous work, the Leviathan, that sort of imposes order from the top, from above the system, and that that controls the um, the, per, the 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 changes within the system, the conflict. So it's not like you're actually having a world of peace. If anything, you're having a type of peace which is defined by um, fear, fear of being punished by masters and overlords. So you might have a type of peace where your slaves are obedient, but it's not a real peace because there's no freedom of the individual to abide by their conscience, to actualize their potentials as all babies yearn to do. So it's really an anti-peace and it's a piece of pot that, that, necessitates population control it, it necessitates keeping people dumbed down so that they don't get the types of thoughts that would awaken the love of justice or freedom or the ability to distinguish a lie from a truth so i wanted to start today because we we really are going into this new year and i, I think that lavrov did a very good job outlining the two opposing schools of thinking as we enter 2023 and, and beyond when he uh, described Francis Fukuyama, and he, and he said, you know, Francis Fukuyama, this is in, uh, this is December 26th, he, uh, he gave this speech to um, a working meeting with the senior executives of the Russian media mm -hmm. in Moscow. And he said, you know, Francis Fukuyama said 30 years ago, this is, this is Lavrov now, that the end of history had come, by which he had meant the overwhelming dominance of liberal ideology, democracy, um, he ridic he was ridiculed and they were saying he was wrong and there was no need to take, uh, such rash forecasts. Now he says, if you, and he's, he's of course referring now to when he says 30 years ago, this is the collapse of the Soviet union. You know, the idea that you could finally have a, um, a unipolar world regime dominated by an Anglo-American cabal that would then impose liberalism onto the rules-based international order. And all that was required was for, you know, NATO to consolidate itself to become a global NATO instead of just being something on uh, the periphery of, of uh, Russia into the, into, you know, the Pacific, into the Middle East, into Africa. That was the, that was the, the idea that that was a foregone conclusion. That was the Leviathan. That was that was on the cusp of being brought into being. Now, Lavrov said, if you look at the Biden administration's policy now, it becomes clear that they want the end of history to take place, not just in the works of political analysts, scientists and pundits, but in real life as well. Everything that we are now witnessing in Europe in its broadest sense and on other continents where U.S. messengers want every country to take an anti-Russian position to join the sanctions and to keep from talking with Russian representatives reflects an attempt to establish the end of history and the final and irreversible dominance of the golden billion. President Vladimir Putin has talked about this more than once. And then he goes through the importance to recognize that history is never going to end. That is a complete artificial uh, utopian ivory tower illusion that will never work that way because history is always built upon human beings hitting the limits to their existence of their knowledge of their growth potential and then going beyond it that's like the fabric that he says is primal in the in the human phenomenon not adapting to what masters say but this idea of always looking to leap beyond the the unknown into new discoveries that make life better and he makes the point that the multipolar uh, orientation is the only one right now which is fitting an actual human civilization. So it goes through that very, very well. So I think today, I mean, th this is the thing, like we're, we're now really seeing a doubling down of this insanity. We've got the, not only this, this idea of the, the, the liberal rules-based order is not just like, it sounds nice on the surface for some, you know, liberal, who doesn't, who doesn't want Liberal, like liberal comes from liberty, does it not? Don't we all, wouldn't we all prefer liberty? Correct. Than, yeah. Than yeah, not? absolutely. The ideas yeah. of liberty, individual liberty, individual freedom. Although nowadays oh. may, people may even struggle to define what that is, uh, Matt, in today's environment. What does the ideas yeah. of liberty, what are the principles of individual freedom and, left, and liberty represent? And I yeah. think there's certain people who are who are so tied into the ideas of being a collective society that no, 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 that we have to live in a collective society that we all have to meet 
and agreement, we all have to reach the same conclusion. So therefore, individuality may or may not exist. Well, that's the thing, right? So <laughs> I think part of this, this idea is like what, what makes liberalism a, a good cover for fascism is that on the one hand, it's premised around the 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 max the, the the worst possible rejection of truth that you could imagine because liberty simply becomes this banal my ability to do whatever the hell i want to do like that's my that's how you define freedom is just doing whatever you want to do but it's like well sometimes what you want to do is stupid and self-destructive to yourself your family your neighbors like doing whatever you want to do is not necessarily you know you might want you you might get in a mood one day to you know you might get depressed you want to kill yourself you might get in you might have a mood where you 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 know because of whatever conditioning you're you're in as a 17 year old kid in school and you're in your culture and your you know that you might want to just like get surgery to uh, to change to cut off your penis right, right? you might just want to do that does that mean that that is actually the truthful thing that you really deep down uh, really really want or is that something that's been coerced into you as a false desire mm. well the freedom to do whatever you want to do all of a sudden you realize well if your if your society is controlled by social engineers for you know manipulating your emotions on most things, it's not really freedom. And um, in that sense, when you get around to well, what is actually true? Well, people get kind of offended by that. It's like, well, maybe you shouldn't want a lot of the things you want, and people get offended because it's like, well, no, that's sacred. What I want is sacred. That that must be like maximum freedom. And, and well, like I FK said. Yeah, and I'd love to get your thoughts on this, but I saw a recent statistic, like you had mentioned, that the the freedom and so forth. And when you look at um, uh, suicide, like for some, yeah. like in Canada, for uh, when they they actually legalized that, like isn't like suicide like among the youth, like like the third or fourth largest, like it, it, it's it's significant, it's crazy in Canada right now. Like suicide and the death rate due to suicide is just is just off the charts. And you know, exactly suicide in Asia. Euthanasia. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Which so. is not that different, admittedly. <laughs> yeah. True. True. Um, well, yeah. No, there's like a ten time, in, a tenfold increase in the past uh, six or seven years since uh, they really began. 2016 is when they started really making suicide more normalized as far as euthanasia was concerned. But it was really just in the last couple of years that it's 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 opened <laughs> wide open. Um, and that could be some of the social programming that you know that that, that occurs. So, and watch out—we have a grill in the house now. So, hey, watch out. it's a grill. Hey, I I apologize for running a little bit late.